The Babysitter's Club by Gail Galligan. Book 6. Christie's Big Day. Chapter 1. And before that, the mansion belonged to the old man Brewer. He ate fried dandelions, and after he turned 50, he never left home, except to go out in the yard and get more dandelions. Then he died, and his ghost stayed in our attic. And that's the story of how our attic got haunted. Karen, I think you're scaring your brother. N no, she's not. Well, this is important information for you, Christy. When you move into our house, you're going to want to know everything about our great-grandfather. Especially if you get a bedroom on the third floor. I, I think that's enough ghost talk for one day. Hi there, I'm Chrissy Thomas, and the cute kids you see here are Karen and Andrew. Their father is engaged to my mother. When our parents get married, Karen and Andrew will become my little stepsister and stepbrother. And my brothers and I will move out of our house where we grew up into Wonson's mansion. There are pros and cons. The pros, I wasn't kidding about the mansion. Wonson's rich, like millionaire rich. Charlie and Sam, my older brothers, will finally get their own rooms. Dave and Michael, my little brother, can have a room bigger than a closet. I don't benefit at all where bedrooms are concerned, since I already have my own, and I think it's just fine. What's the con, you ask? Wesson lives all the way across town, but I've never lived anywhere but right here on Bradford Court. All my friends are here, my best friend, a next-door neighbor, Marianne Spear, Claudia Kishi right across the street, Stacy McGill, Don Schaffer, and Mallory Pike just a few blocks away. The six of us make up the Babysitter's Club. And it won't be nearly as easy for me to run the club when I live on the other side of Stony Brook. Christy, Karen, and Andrew, dinner's ready. This looks great, Mom. But it's so nice out, shouldn't we eat outside? Spaghetti in our laps? That sounds like a start of a detergent commercial. Spaghetti! Spaghetti! I can't believe we're going to have four brothers. We'd better stick together. I'll have two sisters! It's weird thinking about how things are going to change after the wedding. For example, Mom's afraid there's going to be trouble between Karen and David Michael. They're close enough in age that they're probably going to be competing over things like toys and privileges. Hi, David Michael. Hey. Not to mention, Karen goes to a private school, and David and Michael goes to a public school, so they might compare themselves that way. Then there's the age stuff. Karen's used to being the oldest, and David and Michael's used to being the baby. But we're all getting mashed together. And, and goodness knows what Andrew thinks. Well, we've set the date. What date? The date of the wedding. It'll be the third Saturday in September. Um, what's a wedding? You know, I showed you a whole wedding. Remember when I put on that long white dress and kissed Boo Boo? Boo Boo is a bruised cat. We've talked about the wedding, Andrew, and everyone here is going to be a part of it. We are? If you want to be, Christy? i like you to be my bridesmaid. Really? Like a long fancy dress with flowers in my hair? Since when do you like long fancy dresses and flowers? Since right now. Is that a yes? You'll be my bridesmaid? It's a yes, yes, yes. And Charlie, I'd be honored if you gave me away. Sure. Sam, I'd like you to be my best man. And David Michael will be the ring barrier. What about me? How would you like to be our flower girl? You'd walk up the aisle in front of Elizabeth and me, carrying a basket of rose petals. Ooh. And Andrew can escort you. That means he'll walk beside you. I don't want to be in the wedding, and I mean it. Well, think it over. We'd like to you be in the wedding, but it's up to you, okay? Okay. I didn't give another thought to Andrew all evening. The only thing I could think about was the wedding. I, Kristen Amanda Thomas, was going to be a bridesmaid. 
Chapter 2 I have usually found that in life, good things are followed by bad things. One day, an extra snack falls from the vending machine. The next, it is your quarter. I run a good luck is followed by a run of bad luck. It was that way with the wedding. On Saturday, we had all the good news. Then, just four days later, Mom, you're home. Are you sick? No, honey, I'm fine. But, well, I just can't believe what happened today. Oh, no. For starters, the company wants to send me on a two-week business trip to Europe. Europe? What's wrong with that? London, Paris, Rome. Mom, Mom, can I please come? Please. I promise I'll be good. Please, 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 Europe. I'd like nothing better, sweetie, but the trip is scheduled during the school year. Wait, what? School's over next week. Not this school year. The trip is scheduled for September. So the third Saturday in September, I'm supposed to be in Advenia. Okay, so have an October wedding. Cool air, the leaves turning. I did think of that, actually. I was sitting at my desk, mentally adding sleeves to our gowns and changing the flowers from roses to tristeminums. When the phone rang, guess who it was? Mom, I'm not good at guessing games. The real estate agent. He's already found a buyer for a house. What? That's great news. You thought it'd be, like, months. Well... The buyer's desperate. He's willing to pay what we asked for, which is more than we thought we'd get. But there's a catch. He's in a rush. He wants to move his family in by July 15th. Mom, no, that's next month. It's impossible. Sell the house to someone else? I don't think anyone else would pay us this much money. Well, what do we need it for? You're marrying Watson. Sweetie, Watson and I, and Watson's ex-wife, and your father, we all have various ideas about how to spend our money. It's complicated, but let's just say that I don't want Watson to feel obligated to finance our four extra college educations. The money from the house, half of which is your father's, is going to a college fund for you and your brothers. So the more we make, the better. And then, with Watson's parents being as religious as they are, and him not wanting to rock the boat? Mom, what exactly are you saying? I'm saying that Watson and I are going to have get married at the end of the month, so we can move into the Brewer's house two weeks later. Two and a half weeks to plan a wedding. Um, two and a half weeks to plan a wedding. How can I plan a whole wedding? It's like having a baby. You need time to prepare things. You have to talk to the florist, the dressmaker, the cake shop. Christy, what's going on? It's a long story. And that's if the carter doesn't laugh and hang up. We'll have to have it in Watson's yard. We'd never be able to rent a hall for the reception with such short notice. And decorations, what if it rains? And... Mom! Mom, what are you doing? We have to get ready to move. This whole place needs to be packed up. We can we can clean things out to make a big donation. But I don't want to move. I want one more summer here. I don't want to leave yet. I want to stay here. You said we weren't moving until the fall. You said I'd still have the summer with my friends and the babysitter's club and my room. Those aren't promises, Christy. I'm sorry, but this is the way things have to be. Well, I... I just... Boy. A lot of things have happened here. When Marianne, strict dad, made her go to bed early, we used their secret flashlight codes to keep talking late at night. When we had fights, I knew I could always get her by pulling the, my window shade down. When we weren't fighting, we could st string a paper cup telephone or sail paper airplanes between our windows. What was I going to do for Marianne next door? 
Christy? I'm sorry, sweetie, but I really need your help downstairs. Oh, all right. If we're going to pull this off, we've got to start listing everything. Things to do, things to buy, people to call. First, we'll decide who to invite. I'll go through our address book and you write down the names I'll call out. Got it. All of us, obviously. Nanny and Watson's parents. Barb stars. The Burgesses. Jim and Rita Wilson. And I think that's it. Phew. Hmm. An awful lot of these people are from out of the state. And a lot of them have children. They might not be able to take the time off, but we'll see. And then we started in on other lists. Supplies we need to get, ideas for dinner, decorations. Weddings just sure are complicated. By 5.30, when it was time for my babysitter's club meeting, I understood why mom was panicking earlier. I began to feel sort of sorry for her. Chapter 3 By the time I dashed across the street to Claudia's house, it was 5.56. And I was the last one to arrive. Not a great look for the club president. But since everyone was there already, I took advantage of the situation to get a good long look at them. I knew I'd still see everyone at meetings and in school, but it didn't feel like things would be at the same after I moved. Aha! Claudia Kishi, vice president, artist, Candy F. Sikunanda. Chrissy McGill, club treasurer from New York, fashion expert. Myriad Spear, club secretary, my best friend. Don Schaffer, alternate officer, half nut, her mom's dating Marianne's dad. Mallory Pike, junior officer, oldest of eight, so she's a real pro. Sorry I'm late, any calls yet? Just one. I have a feeling it was Sam. He was asking for a sitter who had experience with lots of smelly farts. That's not even funny. Let's just move on to club business. Let's see, have you all been reading the notebook? Yep, I'm catching up. How's the treasury? Healthy. We've got a little extra. Do we need anything? I don't think so. Maybe we should do something fun. Oh, an end of school party. Hold on a moment. Christy, is something the matter? Might as well get over with it. I I have good news and bad news. Oh. The good news is I'm going to be a bridesmaid in mom's wedding. Ooh. The bad news is the wedding's in two and a half weeks. And we're moving in July. You can't! You can't move in July! I tried to tell mom the same thing. She wouldn't listen. It's complicated, but she has to sell the house right now. But... But... Hello, Babysitter's Club. Hi, Dr. Johnson. How's Charlotte? Friday, 3 to 5? Don and I are free. Jeff and I are going to our grandpa's that afternoon, so you can take it. Alright, Christy. Good news first. Tell us about being a bridesmaid. Uh, actually, I've known since Saturday, but I didn't mention it because they wouldn't understand. They'd have swapped their own homes for Watson in an instant, ghost and all. And Marianne would have been overjoyed if her dad had proposed to Don's mom. How could I explain that the reason I'd hardly talked about the wedding was deep down... I still wasn't sure I wanted Mom and Watson to get married. Well, because we still thought the wedding was months and months away. Okay, you goof, but tell us about it. What are you going to wear? Well, Charlie and Mungo, 3.30 to 6 next Tuesday. Don or Stacy? Sorry, I'm going to be at the doctor's in New York all day. Everything okay? Yeah, just a checkup. Bridesmaid gown. Okay, okay. It's going to be long, with short sleeves, and a ribbon sash above my waist. It'll 
make me look taller. What color? Whatever color I want, as long as Karen agrees we're matching. I think she should choose pink. Too cutesy. Green. I, I don't know. How about pale yellow? That's a nice summer color. Ooh, good idea. And your shoes? Oh, get this. Mom said I can wear heels, and we're going to buy these special shoes that you can dye to match your dress. Ooh. And all of us kids are going to be in the wedding, except Andrew. He's shy. That's so cute. I wish I could be in a wedding. And you said it was soon, right? A week after summer's out. We're nearly free. That reminds me. Are any of you going to the final fling? Nope. You don't need a date, you know. I don't like dances. Well, I'm going. I just have to decide what to wear. We took a few more calls and made plans for the dance. I'll go with or with or without Pete. I think he's like Zeva now. Claudia, are you going with Trevor? Trevor? He's probably dating his guitar by now. That's what all he cares about. I bet he brings it to the dance. By the time our meeting was over, I was more excited about the final fling than the wedding. Chapter 4 The final fling came and went. I took Alan Gray like usual. He was himself, 50% pesty and 50% fun. Claudia brought Austin Bentley, a new boy from school, and Stacy went with Pete after all. Mr. Spear and Mrs. Schaffer invited Don and Marianne out for pizza, so they skipped. And then, before I knew it, the last day of school had come and gone too. It was one week and one day before the wedding. Mom was taking the following week off from work to get everything ready. And to make it up for it, she was working extra hard ahead of time. Or so I thought. Mom, shouldn't you be at work? That's a touchy question. I just asked her the same thing, and you know what she said? Don't tell me, Sam. I'll guess. The wedding's in five days, and we're moving in two weeks. No. The wedding's tomorrow, and we're moving Wednesday. No. The wedding's in five minutes, and we're moving tonight. No. But how about this? Watson's ex-wife suddenly had to drop off Karen and Andrew. And Colin and Uncle Wallace are coming early to help with the wedding prep and are breaking their kids. And Theo and Uncle Neil too. And, uh-oh. Watson's best friend is coming Saturday evening with his wife and their four children. More kids? Mm-hmm. Where are all, all these people going to stay? Our uh, relatives are staying at the Holiday Inn, and Watson's friends are staying in his spare rooms. But if all the adults are helping out at Watson's next week, that means there will be 14 children running around too. 14? Ashley, Burke, Grace, Peter, Emma, Beth, Luke, Andrew, Karen, and David Michael, and Watson's friends' kids? Catherine, Patrick, Mora, and Tony. That's 14, all right. Next week, I need adults to help me cook, arrange flowers, set up chairs, shop, and about a hundred other things. We're never going to manage all of that with 14 children underfoot. Hey, Mom. Hey, Christy. Today was the last day of school. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. How was it? Did you get your report card? Straight A's, but that's not what I mean. I mean that school's over. Starting right now, I have nothing to do, except babysit. Christy, you're a good responsible babysitter, but even you can't take care of 14 children. No, but the babysitter's club can. There are six of us. The kids could come over during the day. Oh, brother. I'd, I'd have to check with the other members to be sure. And we might have to cancel some appointments, but I think we can do it. Christy, that might be the solution. If we could hire you for the week, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, Watson and I would pay, let's see, 
double the usual club rate. What? I volunteer. I'm old. I'm responsible. I live with children every day. Sam, you already have a summer job. Boo. Christy, Christy. Oh, Mom, you're home too. Guess what, everybody? Citizenship Award. This certifies that David Michael Thomas has been chosen best citizen of the year in Mr. Bowman's room by his peers. That means the other kids, they voted for me. Duh. Honey, congratulations. We'll have to frame this. Can we put it on the awards wall? Of course. You know, in about two weeks, there isn't going to be an awards wall anymore. We'll have to all pack up for the move. Yeah, I thought of that. Poor kid. Do you think M Mom put up our awards wall and trophy shelf at Watson's? Donna. Hey, Sam. What do you do when you think about, like, going to the Brewers? I just feel like it's going to be so different. Well, I don't really mind. At least none of us have to change schools. Did you know that Mom and Watson have to pay to let you stay at Stony Brook Middle School instead of switching to Kensley? What? How come? Watson is in Kensley School District, so you're supposed to go there. But there isn't a special fee you can pay to ignore that. Charlie and I are good since there's only one high school. Nobody told me. They're trying to make the move as easy as possible. But, Sam, we still aren't Watson's kids. We'll be living over there, but we'll be his stepkids. What are you getting at? I don't know what that means. Like, if Watson was my dad, I could ask him to buy like big things, like a TV for my bedroom. But he'll be my stepdad. So, what's the limit? Can I borrow a few dollars when mom's not around? She was saying she won't pay for college. There's a big difference between four college tuitions and two dollars. Yeah, but where do you draw the line? In what ways will he be our father? Those are two heavy questions. Sounds like you've been having one serious talk. Just want to know what to expect, Charlie. No one knows what's going to happen, Christy. I don't think Mom and Watson are even sure. Uh -huh. It's like we're in a movie. Our parents get divorced, Mommy's a millionaire. They get married, we move into a mansion. But that doesn't mean it was. it's a happy ending. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's kind of nuts. And scary, but we'll make it work. You think so? Yeah. Chapter 5 the next day, I called the first emergency meeting of the Babysitter's Club that we'd had in a long time. What's this all about? Yeah, an emergency on the first day of summer vacation? Well, sort of. You all know that the wedding is a week away, and since Mom has so much to do, my relatives and some of Watson's friends are coming early to help. That's nice. It is, except that they're all arriving by Monday with their kids. At first, Mom thought that they would just hang around Watson's while the adults were working, but I made a suggestion. If we babysit the kids at my house, the adults can get everything done. The only thing is, there are 14 of them. 14? But we babysat for lots of kids before. I know we can do this, and Mom said that if we can watch them from 9 to 5 every day, she and Watson will pay us twice our usual rate. That's a lot of gummy bears. <laughs> like 60 bags, or 300 Twinkies, 1200 jawbreakers. You're serious about this, right? Of course I'm serious. Mom is in a real bind. We didn't see this coming. And with everyone coming f from out of town, we have to do something. And your mom thinks we can handle it? Yes. So do I. It works out the two or three kids for each of us. That's nothing. But 14 kids at once? A million balls of really nice yarn. What do you guys think? I'm in. 
Let's do this. We can do it. Yeah. Marianne? Let's do it. All right. That means we have some serious planning to do. Nine to five means all day. Every day next week. I'm going to have to leave a couple times for dress fittings and things, but it shouldn't be too much. Marianne, can you check next week's calendar? Let's see. This isn't too bad. Christy, you're scheduled for Jamie Newton on Tuesday. I've got Jenny Prezeros on Wednesday evening, and I can still do that. Then, Stacy, you're sitting for Charlotte Johnson on Thursday. The only other appointments are David, Michael, Karen, and Andrew, but we'll have them anyway. Hmm... Well, we'll have to call the Newtons and Johnsons and cancel, unless we could just bring them over. I'll call Mrs. Newton, then you call Dr. Johnson. I explained the situation to Mrs. Newton, who was not only understanding, but enthusiastic. She thought the experience would be good for Jamie, who was going to preschool in the fall and needed to get used to having other kids around. And it turned out, Dr. Johnson was about to call us. Her schedule had gotten switched around, so she didn't need a sitter after all. All right, I'd better tell you about the kids. I'll take notes. First, three are the Millers. Cousins, Ashley, nine, Burke, six, Grace, five, and Peter, three. Then, the Miners. I haven't met Beck yet, but her pictures are cute. Cousins, Emma, eight, Luke, 10, and Beth is one. And last, the Fildings. I don't know a lot about them. Watson's friends. Patrick, three. Catherine, five. Muya, two. And Tony, eight months. Gosh. Well, I have a 10 year old, two 6 year olds, one 9 year old, one 8 year old, a 4 year old, one 7 year old. Two five year olds, two three year olds, a one year old, a two year old, and a baby. It sounds kind of a handful when you put it that way. But we'll manage. Maybe you should organize the list, sort the kids by age, and divide them up. On it. Ooh. Let me see that. And ta da! Now we have five groups of kids. Mallory can be with me since we'll be hopping out the winning stuff sometimes. We'd better decide who'll be in charge of each group. Does anyone, especially the older kids? The babies? I don't really care which kids I get. Same. Don got the six and seven year olds and two. And the three year olds went to Claudia. And Mallory and I took Grace, Catherine, and Andrew. That makes sense, since Andrew's most comfortable around me. And Jamie's about the same age, so we can take him on Tuesday. Hey, you know what we can do to keep the group straight? We could call them the red group or blue group or whatever, and make red tags for Stacy's kids, blue for Dawn's, and so on. That way, we can learn everyone's names and spot our kids quickly, too. Yes! We'll need construction paper, string... Oh, and we should make matching tags for ourselves. That way, all the kids will be able to find their leader when the kids who can't read yet. That's a good idea. Phew. Hello, girls. You seem to be working very hard. Claudia filled Mimi in on what we were doing. Oh my, you must be sure to call me if you need anything. I will be happy to help out. Thank you, Mimi. That's really good to know. We were all still a little nervous, but we started to get excited and we talked, planned, and made lists of things to do with the kids. Monday couldn't come soon enough. Chapter 6 Wedding Countdown Sunday, 6 Days to Go Sunday is my favorite day of the week, summer or winter, for one reason. I get to sleep late. Usually. Rise and shine. Ah! Why are you torturing me? It's 8 o'clock, even your brothers are up already. But I won't have another chance to sleep until next Sunday. 
Christy, I need you today. Uh, Aunt Colin, and Uncle Wallace, Aunt Theo, and Uncle Neil are arriving today. We're going to the mo motel first, and then they'll come over here for dinner. And Nanny's coming over. She wants to measure you again. Hmm. Are you sure I can't sleep for just ten more minutes? Out we go. A few hours later, I went outside to wait for Nanny. Nanny is my grandma on mom's side. She lives about 40 minutes away and she's really cool. She does a bunch of stuff like gardening and bowling and sewing. She even volunteered to make dresses for me and Karen. Nanny! Hello! Nanny, how's the dress? Christy, at least wait until she's inside. Oh, she's excited. It's coming along wonderfully. I just need to check the arms again. It'll be ready in time, right? Right? Christy! We all took a few minutes to drink lemonade and catch up with Nanny. And then it was time for business. While the kids cleaned the house, Mom and Nanny hold it up in the kitchen to figure out the wedding food. Mom had been lucky enough to find a carter to, who could make the main courses in such short notice, but she and Watson were on their own for everything else. They'd have to show the other adults how to prepare hundreds of appetizers, salads, and desserts. By late afternoon, the house was shiny and clean. Mom and Nanny were through with recipes for the time being. And our relatives were starting to arrive. They're here! They're here! Uncle Neil. He always smells like cigars, but he's okay. Aunt Theo, Mom's younger sister. Christy, have you grown? She says that to everyone, and I most certainly have not. Nanny! Nanny! I want a second place ribbon in my gymnastics meet! Emma, who is always a bungle of energy. And Luke, who I remember being as quiet and small, Looks like the last two years haven't changed him much. And, hi there, Beth. Boop. Goodness, I'm amazed she let you pick her up. Usually she screams if strangers get anywhere close. We have the worst time with babysitters. And Colin, Uncle Wallace. Hey, Christy. Colin is my mom's youngest sister, and I love her. She's a, she's a lot like Nanny, busy and active, with a bit of a wild streak. How are you doing, hon? Fine. Meanwhile, cousins were slipping out of the car. Burke! Peter, you okay? He's a little car sick. Yeah, he just puked all over his activity book. Grace, that's enough. Ashley, what happened to you? I broke it roller skating. We didn't mention it because we didn't want anyone to think she shouldn't come. She's always pretty fast. He wasn't kidding. Nanny fussed over Ashley and then handed out gifts to all the kids. Even my brothers and me, although we see her pretty often. Then it was time for dinner and oh boy. Beth spit a huge mouthful of carrots all over her dad's shirt. Peter and Grace got in a fight and began to cry. Burke and David Michael got in a fight and began to cry. Emma teased Ashley. Ashley whacked Emma with her crutch and Emma cried. They were sent to separate rooms until they apologized. And Luke did not say one word for the entire meal. These eight kids were causing plenty of trouble, even with seven adults. Me, Sam, Charlie there. What would the next day be like, with just six babysitters watching 14 children? Chapter 7. Wedding Countdown. Monday, five days ago. It's only 14 kids. You're all, they're all shorter than you. 8.30 on the dot. I almost couldn't sleep. We put on our own tags before we forgot them. Then we better get organized. It's gorgeous out. Maybe we should try to stay in the backyard. Yeah, if things get crazy, we can always break into groups. 
And Marianne, Mom got out our playpen in case you need it. That's perfect. I'll set it up outside so Tony and Beth can be with the bit kids. Just before nine o'clock, the Millers arrived. Now, you've split you up into different groups. Your tags look like your leaders, so you can spot each other. Christy, I know you and your friends will have a, like hands full today, but I need to tell you a couple of things. Peter usually goes down for a nap after lunch around two. Grace generally doesn't take a nap, but if she's cranky, she'll sometimes go with Peter uh, just a sec. Please continue. These are the prescriptions. Make sure they're out of reach of the small children. You shouldn't need them, but you might. The one with the pink cap is for Burke's allergies. If you're outdoors a lot, he will start wheezing. Give him one of these and make sure he lies down inside for a while. He'll know what to do. Oh boy. What if one of the kids got sick and we had to split them off into the group? And the other one is for Ashley. Was our house childproof enough? Had we really thought everything through? If her leg starts swelling or hurting, you can give her half a pillow of food. Got it. I think that's it. Thank you, Christy. Woohoo, Christy, we're here. And to you, this is Marianne, Stacy. Fine, fine, yes, thank you. Now, I bought Bevis a walkatot chair so she can scoot around safely. And her stroller, if you want to take a walk, it might also help if she cries. She'll probably do that when, she, when we leave. Beth usually takes two naps, around 11 and 2, and she tends to take a bottle before bed. She's allergic to cow's milk, so make sure you only give her the bottle I brought. Where are all these kids going to sleep? Ah, oh, jeez. I'm going to draw more Beat of Destiny. Honey, I want you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Felding. Hi. I'm Christy, and these are the other members of the Babysitter's Club. They're all very shy. Duh. This is where you're going to play today. Andrew and Karen are here, see? I'm Christy. We're going to have a lot of fun. There are games and toys and friends to play with. Um, do you like dogs? We've got all Louie. A dog? I think I'm just going to put Tony in the playpen, if that's alright. I, uh, he'll stop crying after a while. This is Catherine. And these are Patrick and Mora. Well, are the adults all ready to go? Yes, let's. Quick, put the rest of the name tags and divide into groups. Go, go, go. And just like that, our first crisis was averted. The rest of the morning went smoothly. The parents had packed their kids' lunches so we wouldn't have to worry about allergies and preferences. And then we put the little kids down for a nap. Then, Nanny whisked Carrie and me away to look for the wedding flowers. So, we'll need to discuss flowers for her hair, Chrissy's bouquet, and Karen's basket. Lovely, lovely. We spent 15 minutes discussing flower colors. What's salmon? It's a fish. Yuck. And then 40 minutes deciding how we should do our hair. Who would have thought that flowers could be so exhausting? I don't know whether I'd be have the energy to deal with what I found when we got home, but as it turned out, coming back was the nicest part of the day. The little kids were resting from their naps and stories. And the older kids were excited because Stacy and Don helped them put together a play, which they performed for all of us. At 5 o'clock, the parents came home to 14 happy children. Our first day, to everyone's surprise, was a success. Tuesday, June 23rd. 
Today was another bright sunny day, thank goodness, and almost as warm as the nice September day in California. Yesterday was f fine with all the kids in Christie's backyard, but we decided to do different things this morning. The kids could get tired of the Thomas's yard pretty quickly. So after the parents left, Marianne took the babies for a walk, Stacy took the red group to the brook to catch minnows, Christy and Claudia walked their groups to the public library and for story hour, and I took David, Michael, Burke, and Karen to the school playground. What a morning my group had, all thanks to Karen's imagination. Dawn. Chapter 8. Wedding Countdown. Tuesday, four days to go. Tuesday started off a lot like Monday, but with less crying on the kids' parts and more confidence on ours. Today, we'd be splitting up for group activities. Marianne was having a peaceful, if slow, go for it. Beth and Tony both started in the stroller, but then Beth wanted to get out and walk. She wasn't very good at it yet. After 10 minutes, they traveled about 6 feet. Meanwhile, Stacy set off for her brook with Luke, Ashley, and Emma. I can't get into a good position. My leg just wouldn't go that way. Oh no, you're right. Um, I have a better idea. What's the pirate's favorite letter? R. <laughs> no, the C. Boo. Claudia, Mallory, and I had a bungled four kids into a few wagons, so we were making good time on our way to the library. Legs in wagon. We only, the only hitch came when we stopped to pick up Jamie. Hi, hi. Hmm. Hey, you know what we need? A wagon watcher. Well, if you see anyone put their hands or feet outside the wagon, then you have to trade places. Claudia's idea was great. None of the kids want to be caught, but they all wanted to be the wagon watcher. So we rolled cheerfully to the library, stopping eight times to switch kids, and arrived just in time for story hour. While all this was happening, Dawn was walking the bluebirds to the elementary school playground for an arts and crafts group. But Morbida Dusty doesn't know I had one more spell left to say. It sounded like an easy job, and that's how it started out. And the good magic blew her up, up, and away. But Karen Brewer always seems to make things more interesting than usual. Hey, David Michael, you know what? What? Yesterday, when I got home, this big kid on my street said that an army of Martians is going to attack tonight. Martians? Tonight? Karen, you know that's just a story, a joke. It's true. He told me a lot of people would think that, but the believers would be able to hide in time. So if we make it underground before they attack, we'll be safe. You guys, I wonder what will happen when they land. I bet they have rays and guns and spray guns. And there'll be hundreds of them coming in big shiny silver saucers. Ah! I thought I saw one. Guys, we're here. We've got arts and crafts today and a puppet making contest. Wouldn't you like to enter? I wonder what the pri- Karen, your basement is underground, right? Can we hide there? I don't know if our motel has a basement. Come on, you guys. Why don't we try making some puppets? We'd rather, we'd rather go swing. Okay. I'll go see what that prize is at least. Fran! Fran! Tina, what's wrong? Martians, they're coming to take us away! What on earth? Which means you'll have to go underground, like in your basement. Karen Brewer. I'm going home! Me too! I do not want to you scaring other kids with that story. But we have to warn them. They have to be ready for the attack. There's no such thing. Now, let's go make some puppets. Crack. Crash. 
Martians! Ah! They're coming to get us! They're attacking! We have to hide! Hurry! Hurry! Ah! I'm so, so sorry. Just get her out of here, alright? Karen? What you did was very bad. You scared a lot of kids today. Now think about what's going to happen tonight when they go home and can't get to sleep. What if one of them does something dangerous and gets hurt because of the scary stories you told? I'm sorry. I promise to never mention the Martians again. Me too. Yeah. You're a very good storyteller, Karen. I know. The rest of Tuesday passed calmly, and we went to our separate ways, exhausted but proud of ourselves for making it through the another day. I should have been patting myself on the back as I drifted peacefully to sleep, but something had just occurred to me. Was I supposed to give Mom and Watson a wedding present? Wednesday, June 24th. This is a confession, you guys. I know you think I'm so sophisticated since I'm from New York and everything, but no kidding, my favorite movie is Mary Poppins. I've seen, I've seen it 65 times. I know it by heart. Anyway, when I saw that it was going to be at the NBC Theater for a special screening, I decided I had to have another chance to see it on a big screen. That's one reason I was so determined to take the Red Group to it. Besides, since it's my favorite movie, I was sure Luke, Emma, and Ashley would love it too. Believe me, if I'd had a crystal ball to see into the future, I would never have taken them. Stacy. Chapter 9. Wedding Countdown. Wednesday, three days to go. 1am on Wednesday marked our official halfway point. Just two and a half days left. Of course, we had our share of problems. I keep thinking about all the scared children, especially the ones who ran home. I hope their families were able to make them feel better. And then there was the whole bathroom situation. We have three bathrooms, one downstairs and two upstairs. Mom da is downstairs and off limits, which meant we had to share two bathrooms between 20 people. We decided to split them up by group. Us babysitters and the red and blue groups would have to use the upstairs bathroom. Everyone else would go downstairs. Mallory, 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 and am I in this bathroom? Um, but that didn't last very long. I really, really, really have to go and someone's in the other one. Oh gosh, um, just use this one for now, I guess. The most important thing was that the very kids were having fun. And Stacy had a very special plan for her group that afternoon. Thanks again for taking us. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'll drive very slowly. I don't want to jar your leg. While Nanny and I went shoe shopping, Stacy would be taking her kids to see Mary Poppins. True to her position as treasurer, she'd even thought ahead and asked their parents for permission and ticket money in advance. Have fun, we'll be back in two hours. Now, do all of you have your money? Yep. Yep. Uh. Next. Emma, I told you three to make sure you brought your money. I did, but I can't find it. Marianne, I need your help. Is that crying in the background? Yeah, the phone woke the babies. Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. Listen, Emma can't find her ticket money. Would you mind? Sure thing. Let me just quiet them down and I'll take a look around, okay? Alright, let's go, go, go. We've got a minute until... Junior Mints, M&M's, Popcorn... You guys, we don't have time or money anyway. You just had lunch. We have a room for a snack. Our moms gave us extra money for a treat. We need four seats together with one on the aisle for Ashley. Shh. Sorry, sorry. 
Everything went well until right near the end of the movie. Whoops! Ack! What? Thank goodness. What happened? Ask her. We were on the balcony and <laughs> Emma was eating junior mints, but <laughs> I got some someone on the head. Oh, well, I can always see it on TV. As for me, I now had my wedding shoes, but still no idea about a gift from Mom and Watson. Thursday, June 25th. Until today, I didn't know that barber is a dirty word, but it is to little boys. Here's how I found out. When the mothers and fathers dropped their children off at Christie's house this morning, they all looked guilty. It turned out that they decided the boys, except for baby Tony, needed their hair cut before the wedding. Since the barber is only open from 9 until 5, Guess what they asked us poor defenseless, unprepared babysitters to do? They asked us to take Luke, David, Michael, Burke, Andrew, Peter, and Patrick to poor defenseless, unprepared Mr. Gates, whose barbershop is just around the corner from the elementary school. When we told the boys about their field trip, all six of them turned pale, then red, then began throwing tantrums. Marianne. Chapter 10. Wedding Countdown. Thursday, two days to go. Alright team, we've got six boys getting haircuts and eight kids staying behind. How should we split up? Should three of us go to the barber? That seems like too many. Mr. Gates has an assistant, right? So he can get two haircuts at a time. There are only be four to watch. Good point. Okay, I'll go, since I'm related to most of these boys, and I'll take one of you with me. Any volunteers? I... I'll go. I wouldn't mind a break... I guess. Then, let's quarrel some kids. Barber time! No, 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 no! No! We're not coming down. Fine. Oh, Marianne, would you get Nanny on the phone and tell her to come over? And tell the boys are... Wait! Wait! You want me to look like an owl, don't you? That's what I looked like after I went to Mr. Gates last time. And my hair just got normal again. David Michael, don't you trust Mom? She doesn't want an owl at her wedding either. And she chose Mr. Gates. Uh. Well, what do we have here? Isn't it obvious? Hi, Mr. Gates. My mom's getting married on Saturday, and all these kids need their haircuts. But not too short. Not over my ears. Not too long at the sides. Leave my part alone. I don't want a part. Do you have lollipops? So, one at a time, one at a time. This is Mr. Pratt, our other barber. He'll be helping me today. Hey. Now, which two of you would like to go first? Not me! Luke and David Michael. No! I will call Nanny. I'm Rocket Man! Oh, no you're not! Don't make me look like an owl. Now, now. It seems I got a big jar of lollipops right over there, but I only give them to well-behaved customers. I'm too old for lollipops. Me too. Ask for two last time? That doesn't, Mr. Gates. Excuse us for a moment. The two of you are being just plain rude. Who taught you to speak that way to adults? My friends and I are tired to make this fun for you, and you're too much to handle. I guess I'll just have to call Nanny after all and ask her to to come over. No, no, please. We'll be good, I promise. Mr. 
We did it! Somehow we did it! Thank goodness! Now, if I could just think of a wedding present for Mom and Watson, this would be the perfect day. Uh, a toaster oven, a rolling pin, a picnic basket, hmm, a fire engine, a robot. Hey, Christy, do I have to get them a present too? It would be nice. Help me think of one. Oh, brother. Friday, June 26th. Unfair. Today, it rains. All day. I guess we babysitters shouldn't complain too much since it was the first day all that rained all week. But still, it was a yucky day weather-wise. The kids were not bad though. Hey, Christy, how come we have to write in this diary this week? We're all s sitting so we all know what's going on, right? I guess it's just the rules, right? Anyway, it can't hurt. Anyway, this morning went okay, but by the time lunch was over, we were running out of things to do then. I got this really fun idea. Claudia. Chapter 11. Wednesday Countdown. Friday? One day to go. I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. My leg hurts. Get back here! Morbida destiny. You've got to do something. Fast. But what? We've done everything already. Well, that's the problem. We should probably separate them. This is getting out of hand. Although... What if we could think of a project for the whole group that our smaller groups could work on separately? Like a show? Exactly. How about a talent show? Even the littlest kids can be in it. That might work. We only have to keep them busy until about 4, then we can have them dressed up for the rehearsal dinner. Oh, that's right, I almost forgot. Then mom first told me the plan, I had to ask what a rehearsal dinner was. It turns out that on the day before the wedding, everyone who's going to be in it gets together and practices, just like they're putting on a play. Afterward, they go out with their families and a few special friends for a nice dinner. And since we'll be watching the kids, the whole club was invited. All we had to do was survive until then. You know, that gives me an idea. Instead of putting on an ordinary show or play, how about putting on a wedding? You mean marry off the kids? Sure, all these poor kids have heard about what, what for the last week is the wedding. We might as well prepare them for the real thing, right? I love it. Christy, do you still have your old and make-believe clothes? Actually, I've got even more of them. Our other grandma sent us a huge box for, for us last year. It's wedding time. Well, we just chose our happy couple. It's me and David Michael. Because we're around the same height. With that settled, we found volunteers for the other parts of the wedding. Minister, mother of the bride, father of the bride, m mines, maids of honor, flower girl, ushers, ring barrier. Picked out costumes and then divided into our groups to rehearse. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to join these guys in holy guacamole. If you think you're ready, you can take the oath. We're ready. Karen, do you promise to love David Michael and help him out and not get old Ben Brewer get him? I do. And David Michael, do you promise to love Karen and help her out and show her how to ride a two-wheeler? I guess. Okay. Also, if you have any kids, be nice to them. Yeah! Don't give them any bedtimes. And don't yell at them if they forget to feed the dog. And once in a while, let them have a snack before dinner. Alright. You may now kiss the bride. What? 
Ew! Ew! Chapter 12. Wedding Countdown. Friday evening. Half a day to go. As soon as we got Karen and Dave and Michael calmed down, it was time to start dressing the kids. Everyone's clothes were in labeled bags, so it should have been easy, but of course... Huh? Oh, do you have someone else's bag? Nope. Hey, Christy, could you come over here? Just stay with Mallory for a minute. Marianne, what's up? Look at this. I found those in Beth's bag and this in Tony's. I got to be Ashley's. It's too big for the other kids. Guys? Okay, Emma Minor. Tell your cousin what you just told me. Emma? I switched the clothes. What? Just just a few things from each bag. Emma! <sighs> Emma, what you just did was really bad. We only have one hour until our parents come home to pick you up. But they expect us, all of us, to be dressed and ready. Thanks to you, we might not be ready at all. Now, while we sort out these clothes, I want you to sit by yourself in the den and think about what you did. It took half an hour, but finally, we were pretty sure we had figured out and sorted things out. By 4.30, we divided into groups again, and I let Emma out of the den. I'm sorry, Christy. I'm sorry I got mad. But promise you you won't do anything else naughty today. Or tomorrow. We all have to be on our best behavior. I promise. Hey, how about a picture? Big kids on the couch. Grace, put Beth in your lap, okay? Hurry, Chrissy, before they move. Oh, who's this handsome crowd? Wouldn't this make a cute holiday card? What's Beth wearing the tights? And with that, the aunts, uncles, and Fildings drove the kids back to Watson's, while the rest of us babysitters the babysitters club left so we could get dressed ourselves. Jeez, the house seems kind of empty now. I'm going to miss those kids. We won't. Tickle the fancy boy! App! You know, David and Michael might not miss sharing, but I bet he'll miss having kids his own age around. Hmm. Maybe he and Karen will get along better than I think. I won't bother you with too many details of the rehearsal. All you need to know is that it went reasonably well, considering we were rehearsing an outdoor wedding in the all-purpose room of the church. And that, we had a minor crisis when Karen found out the florist couldn't get her yellow rose petals and she'd had to make do with white instead. White? What's wrong with that? Evil witches use white flowers and all their most powerful spells. Morbida Destiny will be able to sense them from the next door. She'll take them and become the strongest witch and then kaboom! Ay! What? Nothing, nothing. Not another word about magic, Karen. Not one. And then, it was time for the rehearsal dinner at Watson's. Claudio helped me pick out a new dress th this week before, and I felt very glamorous. We kept the kids polite during dinner. And then we had some time to ourselves. This is my new room. I knew it was going to be big, but I wasn't expecting this. Think of the slumber parties. Think of what you can do with the room, the moral, the company bed. I don't know how I feel about this view yet. At least it's not looking into Morbida Destiny's house. The heist of the evening came as things were drawing to a close. Girls? This is your pay for a job very well done. And a little bonus. We're rich!
With that, the last day before the wedding came to an end, and I still had no idea of what to give Mom and Watson. Chapter 13. Wedding Countdown. Saturday, zero hour. Yes! The wedding wasn't until 2 in the afternoon, but there was a lot to do beforehand. Mom had to pack for her honeymoon, and then Nanny and Mom had to go get their hair done. Then they came back, and Nanny made us all eat something. I'm too nervous. Just a little something. <laughs> she really was Mom's mom. After we'd eaten enough for Nanny, it was time to get dressed. Hey, Marianne, Marianne, Christy, want to help me get dressed? Sure. Well, Christy, you look beautiful. My bouquets and the flowers for my hair had been delivered to Watson's, so I was dressed as I could get for the time being. See you at the wedding. Since Mom and Watson couldn't see each other before the wedding, Mom, Karen, and I went to a spare room where Nanny put the finishing touches on us. It's time. You're next, honey. I, um, brought something for the bride and groom. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Porter. Don't take it! The magics, they... Thanks, Mrs. Porter. Later, the carter wheeled out the wedding cake, and we all gathered around to watch Mom and Watson cut the first slice. At that moment, I knew what to give to mom and my stepfather. Thank you, Christy. You did great. Remember, just call if you need anything. Thanks, Nanny, but I can take care of these kids no problem. We'll see about that. All right, champs, you heard mom. I'm in charge while they're on their honeymoon. So here are the house rules. Uh, one, dinner every night will be pizza. Two, everyone must go to bed an hour later than usual. Three, no eating in the kitchen. Food is only allowed by the TV and it must be on. David Michael, you cannot miss a single cartoon. Do I still have to take my vitamins? Yes. Don't press your luck. With that settled, it was time for me to start working on Mom and Watson's present. Eventually, I needed Claudia's help, but I might as well get my thoughts together before talking to her about it. I did a little research in Mom's office, and I doodled for a bit to get my ideas down. Hey, Cr Christy? Yeah. I know what I'm giving Mom and Watson. What's that? A goldfish. And that's exactly what he did. The next day, I went over to Claudia's early so I could talk to her about my idea before the meeting. So, here's what I have so far. I wanted to show both families and how they become one, something like this. But I need help with the design. Could you show me how to draw a bow and the little flowers you drew on the art project for Mr. Final last year? Or you could use a real bow. Hang on. Let's see what I've got. Draw flowers with Claudia. Okay, let's do some simple roses. We're going to use a pencil to sketch. Got it. One. First, slowly draw a circle. Two. 
Then make curvy lines inside, working toward the middle. Three, and draw puffy bits around it. Now, all you have to do is trace over it with, in a pen and erase the pencil marks. I did it. Hey! Oh, that's lovely. Cloudy is a good teacher. Look what I've got. Mom got the photos she took at the wedding printed. Oh! There you are, getting ready to walk up the aisle. Oh, you're walking in, the, in this one. You look so nervous. I thought I was going to trip. Ah, there's Karen and Andrew. They're so cute. And your mom and Watson kissing. I can't believe you took a picture of that. And here's Mom and Watson cutting the cake. That's the moment that gave me the idea for Mom and Watson's wedding present. What is? When their hands came together and started thinking about like how we can come together too. How we all make one big family now. And I wanted to show that. So Claudia had been helping me put this together. Christy, that's really something. Yeah, I think it will mean a lot to your mom. Everyone coming together to make a new family. And that's what the wedding has been all about.